while I was sailing in a little boat in the Charles River, I, I, I got the idea, gee, maybe someday I could buy my own boat and I could sail to places and explore places and maybe if the boat was big enough, then maybe I could live on it. That's where I got this idea. I didn't know that people lived on boats. I didn't know that there was such a thing as a cruiser who you know, sails all over the planet. I became obsessed with the idea of finding a boat that I could afford and that I could live aboard. And in 1995, I bought a 1982 30-foot Hunter sailboat and had it trucked from New Hampshire down to Boston where it got put on this travel lift and put in the water and they said, there you go. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I had never been in a boat so big. I had never been in a boat with an inboard engine or even with a steering wheel instead of a tiller. But I managed to sail it all the way from East Boston over to Constitution Marina where I got that slip right there and lived there for the next nine years on, on that boat and, and other boats that I bought after. I remember when I came into the dock, I, I was so nervous and I like motored it into the slip and all these other people from other boats came out and helped me with lines and helped me tie the boat up. I remember a, a guy on another boat taught me how to tie a fender onto the lifeline because I'd never used a fender before. We didn't have those in community boating. And this was my home, a small little 30-foot boat. It's just enough space for me to live in. It was all my own. I learned about living aboard a really small space and being efficient about everything in, in terms of, of space, having just what I needed to live. I think in a lot of ways it made my life a lot simpler because I didn't have room for anything. I couldn't, couldn't store anything. I just had enough room for you know, the basic things I needed to live. There was a navigation station and a little alcohol cook stove. The boat needed a lot of maintenance and renovation. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about plumbing or electrical or, or engines or nothing. And she was a perfect boat for me at that time because she needed me to fix her up and make her seaworthy and comfortable and I needed her to learn about how to do all those things. And I was very happy aboard until I discovered that the one thing I was not ready for was winter. I bought the boat in October and I was so happy to have finally achieved that and then winter hit and it was one of the coldest winters in Boston. I woke up one morning and the salt water in the head was frozen solid. Every single day, 24 hours a day, I could always see my breath because it was so cold inside. I got a little electric ceramic <coughs> cube heater and tried to heat the boat with that, but it wasn't enough. And I went to the Home Depot department store and I bought this insulation called Reflectix. It's this bubble wrap with like aluminum foil on each side. And I covered 100% of the interior of the boat with Reflectix. Like all of the bulk, all, all the walls, the ceiling, the floor. There was no part of the boat that didn't have this bubble wrap aluminum foil. It looked like a cheap budget science fiction movie from the 70s inside. And it still wasn't enough. It was still so cold. One thing that made it bearable was getting an electric mattress pad that heated the bed. I actually spent a lot of time at my job that winter working as a computer programmer, putting in a lot of overtime. Um, and uh, come spring, when I was still alive and sane and still loved everything about the boat and living aboard, I, I think I knew at that point that I was meant to live on a boat. 